Welcome everyone to the 1998 FedEx Card Championship powered by X. 25 drivers are fighting it out over 15 tracks, varying between short ovals, road courses, street courses, the debut of Daytona and the much-awaited return to Indianapolis for the Indianapolis 500. It looks set to be an unforgettable journey, but before we begin the new season, let's take a look at what has changed and how this championship works. Three different chassis manufacturers are participating this season, Reynard, Swift and Lola. Reynard once again looks like the favorite. Their chassis have been the one to beat since a few years, and of course they want to stay at the front, with their updated 98i chassis. Swift will enter their second season in the sport, a company part owned by former driver Hiro Matsushita, who looks set on getting within touch of Reynard with their 009.Z. And then we have Lola, who had a rough 1997 with their ill-fated F1 campaign. But with a new owner, things might be looking up for them in the future. Their T98-00 chassis won't have much expectations, but maybe there will be a few surprises here and there. In terms of engines, Honda, Mercedes, Ford and Toyota are taking part in 1998. With Honda, seemingly having the slight advantage in terms of power and reliability. But overall, the engines seem to be more or less equal. But the main question this season will be, who is going to be the champion? So we can't answer that right now, but here are all the 25 drivers competing this season in the hope of winning this championship. Chip Ganesi Racing have signed American Chad Samuels and the Italian Vittorino Capatapi in the hope of retaining the drivers and the team's championship. And with their Reynard Honda combination, things are looking good for them. The Marlboro team Penske have done a major shakeup. Gone are their own produced chassis, replaced by Lola. And they've also switched the engine manufacturers. They switched from the Mercedes to the full power unit. They hope that their signings, Robin Berda and Dustin Rocco from Germany, can fight at the front more consistently unlike last year, where Paul Tracy fell down massively. The Walker Racing team are continuing to run a single Reynard chassis, and with the German driver Justin Peters, they hope to anger the top teams once again, just like in the last season, with Jill de Ferran. Newman Haas will continue running a Swift chassis, and their hopes lie in the hands of the Brit Danny Quinn and another Brit with Stephen Sim. The team Ray Hall will continue running the Reynard Ford combination and they've signed Brit Aiden Carter and the Frenchman Emmanuel Bappé. So they have an exciting driving lineup, they have the package, so they should be all set up for a proper championship run. The La Pena Motorsport are hoping to challenge for more points this season and with a competitive Swift chassis and with the Irish driver Tommy McIntyre, things are looking promising. Packwest Racing was the biggest surprise in 1997, with both cars scoring race wins during the season. With the newest Reynard and the newest Mercedes power unit, plus with the driver lineup of the American Duncan Robinson and the Spaniard Paulo Moya, things are looking quite good for them and they aim to keep up the form of success from 97. Peyton Corn Racing have signed a Canadian Carson Norvegava. Ryan McCain was originally scheduled to drive, but a lack of sponsorship this season meant that he had to be replaced with Nofei Gava. Let's see how the team will fare this season and, with the Reynard chassis, they might have a good shot at scoring points. Patrick Racing have got their hands on the Brits Harry Williams and Scott Takai Sonnington. Let's see how this pair will fare with the Reynards and if I can spell the first name of Sonnington correctly during the season. The Tesla Motorsports Group have only one car this season, and with the Brit Jamie Metcalf running the Swift chassis. It's gonna be really exciting to see what he can do this season. Akira Wells Racing were originally scheduled to have the driver lineup of Hiro Matsushita and Mario Wolf. However, at the very last minute, Matsushita gave up his seat for the promising Russian Danila Savinov, who drove alongside the German Wolf. We'll see if the Toyota package will do better this season so that Akira Wells can at least challenge for more points. Team Green has signed a sponsorship deal with Cool, which might help them improve their package in the future. With the Finn, Kasper Klein, and with the Brit Andy Graham, they have a very strong lineup, which could be a potential front runner. 
The players for Scythe team were always looking close to a championship in the past. Now, they finally want to claim another one with the Canadian John Newhouse and with the German Jason Gabler. Let's keep an eye on them. The All American Racers outfit from Dan Gurney had a rough couple of years. They are hoping that the newest Reynard with the Toyota engine and the driver lineup of Hungarian driver Milan Dres and the Spaniard Julian Schulz that they hopefully can improve their situation and fight for more points unlike it last this season. And finally there is Davis Racing. The yellow Lola Fords will be driven by the German Johannes Miles, another newcomer to the series. Let's see how he gets on this season. Of course it's also important to know where the drivers will be racing this season. So without further ado, let's have a quick look into the calendar, shall we? We start the season with the Marlboro Grand Prix of Fontana, followed up with the Foster's Grand Prix in Adelaide, replacing Service Paradise. Buenos Aires, another new track on the calendar, will be round 3 of the championship, followed up by two rounds in Brazil, first on the Ovo in Rio de Janeiro and the road course in Interlagos. Long Beach Grand Prix is next, followed up by the much-awaited big return of the Indianapolis 500. After that, we go to the Cleveland Airport, followed by the Gateway Oval. A span of five road courses follows, starting in Montreal, then going to Virginia, then we go to Watkins Glen, followed up by Road America, and we end this stretch in Laguna Seca. The season finale will be run on a new circle of the calendar, Daytona. It has seen some major testing from car drivers, who all declared to have no safety issues. So they won't black out during the race, and the race can go ahead as planned. So we should be all set for a very exciting finale. In terms of point standings, here's the rundown of the points. The top 12 will earn points, with the winner getting 20 points, second place driver getting 16, third place driver getting 14 points, 4th place driver getting 12, 5th place gets 10, 6th place gets 8, 7th place gets 6, and then all the way down to P12. There will also be a point for the fastest qualifier, and there will also be a point for the fastest lap during the race. This should engage drivers to push extra hard to earn one extra point. This is a slight rude tweak from last year, where the guy who lead led the most laps during the race will earn another point, but decided to switch it up a bit to engage faster driving. So are you all excited for the season? I am. So this is all you need to know and I can't wait for Fontana. So until then, see you then.